Hi everyone, this is Vampire Chapters. We're checking this out because it is coming to Kickstarter soon and I thought that seeing as there's a digital version that you can play on on your on your browser, we'd, we'd play it and see what it's like because I really love the tabletop game, but a board game that you can play solo is an interesting idea that I've never tried. Uh, I, I think you can also play it multiplayer though, so that's probably a good thing. What is available at the moment is a kind of prologue for Gangrel. That is only available in a small amount of, you know, items and things you can do. But it does have a, a short story combat se sequence to it, so I thought I'd try that out. So let's begin at the beginning. You opened your eyes at dusk, awakened by hunger. You exited your haven, searching for prey. Perhaps a mortal with a solid build. That's how you like them. The air is sweet tonight, and the botanical gardens attract a large crowd. You take position in the dark to observe the livestock. As time passes by, the flow of humans thins. You start to think you might have missed your chance. Suddenly, your attention is drawn to a group of kindred hunting on your territory. Something strange is happening. You remain vigilant, away from the action. The silhouette of a large man, the shadow hiding his face, is headed towards a white van in the parking lot. <clears throat> God, you know, being dramatic is hell on the vocal cords. He goes around, opens the rear doors, and pulls out a shovel, slinging it on his shoulder. Then he heads to the botan botanical gardens with the pace of a man with purpose. The orange glow of the street lights illuminates his face. You see a scar. A killer's face. His face. His face! You see his face! 1990, Ochre Crisis. In the little house where you've been, you found refuge for the past week, only chaos and blood remain. The last night has been rough, and the military certainly didn't make it easier, but tonight your life really turns upside down. In the little roofless house, a man is still standing, your brother's broken neck in his right hand. And even if you are but a mortal, a bestial instinct urges you to act. Only one of you will make it out alive. You what? Is this a flashback? Is that what the game is doing? Okay, we need to fight our opponent until death. And we need to reveal the characteristics cards. Card of your opponent. What? What? Read card E1. Okay, I know that's over here. Ah, no. I, I can apparently scroll over this. Wonderful. What does that say? You still have a moment to decide how you want to kill him. Choose the method that will better quench your thirst for revenge. Yeah! Knife requires athletics. Straightforward attack. I could just beat his head in. I have three athletics. Three out of five is like a, a, a mediocre movie. That's three stars. So sure. I don't know what... Pause. We've got a pause thing here. We've also got a description of exactly what this is. It's an RPG in a box, apparently. This is interesting, though. I It's kind of choose-your-own-adventure-y. So I guess I'm going to go to card E2 because I want to grab a knife. Whoa! Not E20, E2. There we go. Uh, with three skill points in athletics, you get three automatic successes for this action. Complete this use, uh, b test by rolling three dice of physical attribute and add the results to your rolls to the three you already You need five. Okay. I think I get that. So we roll three dice. All we need. Um, it's... Ooh, it's got a nice physics simulation for the dice. And... Um, is it possible to... Ah, okay. Shift, shift, click is how you do it. Uh, nah. Underwhelming. Ah? Oh, whoa! <laughs> what was that? Um, is that... T is that... Would you count that as a su success? It's not actually sitting straight. I'm going to roll that again. Whoa, it's going there. That one seems kind of broken. I'm going to say that's one success. And my third dice is this one. 
That's five successes with the two automatic ones I get for my points in athletics. Handy. I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have a victory sip. Nothing better than coffee for beating people over the head with a knife. We need to go to card E3 because we won. With dazzling speed, you grab the kitchen knife. Unfortunately, your opponent is no amateur. He rushes at you and hits you violently in the guts. Move your character back one hex. Take the kitchen knife weapon item and discover its effect. Add the uh, slash into your inventory of card skills. Knifing. So where is that? Where is all of that? There's a lot going on here. I mean, actually, for a card game, for a board game, this is, this is not a lot. I just don't know what is going on because this is like an intro scenario. The flip. Oh, I can do a high kick. That is. Oh, it's a kitchen knife. That's a that that. There it is. Good. So I'm assuming I get to move here, or I get to move here. I'm. I have no idea what the highlighted boxes are. Maybe impassable terrain, because yeah, that's that's a countertop. That's a sofa. That's a table. All right, I go there, he rushes in, but there's no mention of actual moving on the hex. But I move back, which is where I was, I think? I don't know. <laughs> but basically, we move back. There's no... Hmm, I don't know where I started. Let's say that I go to there. Sure. But I do get the kitchen knife weapon item, which is this thing here. And it does bonus damage. There's also a malice, which is a brilliant word for, I, I guess, bad thing. Do, we, do I get to see these? I'm going to look at them anyway. We get to punch, we get to uppercut, we get to slash. Is this a heavily combat based game then? I did not. Oh, oh, we needed to do something with the slash. What do we do? What do we do with the slash? Whoa, whoa, whoa scr scrolling. I was going to zoom in. Add the slash kill uh, uh, slash into your inventory of skill cards. Okay, I don't know where my inventory is, if there's anywhere for it, but I have that, which is good. We're screaming while we twerk? What? Oh! Chat says this woman is screaming while she twerks. Uh, it's it's like the modern version of whistle while you work. She's a princess. I think I think it's very important that you get the claws, the screaming, the teeth, and the booty in there. That's what vampire people, vampire uh, the masquerade fans really want, right? Uh, is that the same on the model? It is. That's actually really impressive. How close? That's identical to that art right there. Right, what do we do next? All you have to do is decide which strategy to adopt to make this motherfucker bleed. Ooh. Card E15. Is there a... Oh, this is way better. Let's go straight to E15. Before facing an opponent, you have to choose which skill cards you want to use among the ones you have. It will form your active hand. It corresponds to your max level of physical attribute on your sheet. Is that how many... Yes, since we have three physical attribute, we can have three skill cards among the four in your possession. Uh, we need... Uh, it, I guess it's just telling us which ones we should have. Attack, slash, defense, parry, combat, uppercut. Um, they didn't set that oh, didn't set that up for us, but I guess that's not too difficult to do. During your turn, you can move your character up to athletics plus one hex before or after your action. Move your character on a hex adjacent to the enemy so the fight can start. Your muscles flex tense to their full capacity to maximize damage. Let's go to uh, E16. But first, I guess we will grab the slash card. Uh, was it uppercut and parry? Parry. Those are our. This is our active hand, says the game. One of which is slash, which doesn't get us any bonus. 
But it, it, I guess, does let us use the knife? Uppercut. I don't know if we can use the knife with that. Um, it appears to be... Yeah, that's a weapons card. This is a fighty card. That's also a fighty card. We get plus one dice, but minus one initiative. Uh, we just fail on initiative if we do parrying, but we do get one dice, I assume, to defense. Because we have the knife, I'm going to choose slash. In order to de determine initiative. Oh no, what we haven't done before we do that is, I guess, um, we get to move physical plus one in hexes. So one, two, three, four? Four. Four. That, that's, no, that doesn't look okay, fine. Four. <laughs> They're both, they're both here together. Scarman versus, uh, I assume at this point, not a gangrel lady? She's just very angry and has teeth. We're organizing the order of attacks in a round. We have to choose a skill card, then reveal the enemy's skill cards. Oh, where are they? Uh, oh, we, it tells us to choose Slash. Fortunately, we've already done that. It doesn't have, my initiative remains at five. How do we know what our initiative is? Is it on here? Why is my initiative five? What's the initiative? This guy's initiative is five. I have no idea. There's a box for it and it says nothing. <laughs> my initiative remains at five. I guess they just didn't write down the initiative here? Maybe that's it. Maybe that's what it is. But the card says mine is five. The enemies is also five. And they, I'm gonna guess, have a skill card here. Oh, they're gonna knee me! Minus one initiative to them, but plus two damage. Is that gonna hurt me? I don't know, let's figure that out. To attack first, your total initiative must be higher or equal to, oh, you, I mean, he's got four, I've got five, which means I win. But even if we were equal, I would go first. Kinda cool, kinda handy. Reveal the skill card defense parry, what? Oh, so it doesn't do the knee strike. Okay, uh, would be better if these were already flipped over. Parry, there we go. Initiative fail. So we we go first anyway. That, I'm just gonna say this is, this is irritatingly laid out, but it does make sense when you do what the card says, <laughs> when you actually read things. Plus one resistance. Uh, you're throwing yourself at him to plunge the knife into his ribs. He's clearly getting ready to defend against your attack. All right, it, may, it, it is made clear. Where do we go to next? 17. With a weapon skill at one, you get one automatic success for this action. Complete this attack by rolling three dice and add the result to the one success you already have and the damage modifier of the knife. You plunge the knife in him, but something isn't quite right. Your knife is pushed back almost instantly by your target's flesh. Ew! A blow like this should have made him bleed. Impossible! I, know, I think I know where this is going, but I'm gonna read this through once more. We roll our physical attribute, add the result to the one success and the damage modifier. But what does that do? Does that give us the damage? Let's roll some dice. So we got that one, uh, this one. Let's just click R. Nothing there. Nothing there. Oh my God, really? Oh, oh, is that, that's uh, good. Is that good? I'm just gonna count that as one success because I know it's like a, 10 or a crit or whatever in the normal game, but I don't, I don't actually know what it means. Anyway, plunge the kitchen knife in him. Uh, let's check the next card. Cause we get two successes, but does it to do two damage? Every opponent has a certain level of resistance. Humans usually have low resistance, while kindred and other supernatural beings are endowed with increased resistance. They are therefore more difficult to harm. The enemy has a resistance of three, and his skill card gives him extra. Therefore, four points of damage will be deducted from my successes. Right, so it's successes versus resistance. I do nothing. 
Oh. Pulse. Apply the rest of your successes as damage. <laughs> if any. Sarcastic. Sarcastic comments in a tutorial card. Always funny. His scarred face reveals a vile smile from which you see two protruding fangs. It is now his turn to attack you. Ah, well, crap. This round, pick the skill defense card, parry. Do I have to? Okay, we, t we pick parry, we lose the initiative because of its bad part. Um, he is going to do knee strike, which adds two damage. I am about to take four damage. So, the enemies... Yeah, they have attack of two. Uh, where is it? Knee strike has plus two damage, which means that we're about to take four damage. That makes sense. No dice rolling makes things way quicker and less complicated. I think overall, it's a pretty comprehensive, easy to figure out system. Four damage. With a skill of three in Brawl, you get three automatic successes for this parade? Why did they use the word parade there? <laughs> Suddenly streamers! A whole, a whole bunch of f marching bands come through the door. What? Complete this defensive action by rolling four dice, which is physical attribute plus the skill card bonus, and add the successes. Okay, so we're probably not going to take damage here. The parry gives us an extra dice for our roll. So let's do this. Um, can I roll all four at once? Yes, I can! We get two extra successes. That was a fail, that was a fail. But that is three, four, five successes. Deduce your successes from the four damage. If any damage remains, apply it to your health bar. Good! You gain a bonus. Oh, if you absorb more successes than necessary, you gain a bonus for the next initiative. So we have plus one to initiative now, which would make it six. After ab absorbing his brutal attack, you decide to strike in return while remaining vigilant against his counterattack. Uppercut. So we need to go to E12, which is, I really like this website. I've never heard of, t has anyone heard of Tabletopia before? It's pretty good. It's like Tabletop Simulator, except in a browser as well. And also, I doubt that Chapters is on there, on, on Tabletop Sim. Okay, time to finish the fight on my own. Select the skill card of your choice. <gasps> I get to do something finally? <laughs> Among the three in your active hand. You can't change your active hand, but you can mix the skill cards of your opponent face down and draw the first of the pile. This skill card defines his approach for the new round during a fight. Players using the same skill card lose its bonus. Oh, okay, so you can't just keep doing the same thing. That probably makes a lot of sense. Continue the fight. Only one of you will survive this battle. Uh, if your enemy reaches two points on his health bar, go to E13. If you are defeated, E14. Okay, I guess we'll figure out who wins here. So I just parried. I want to slash again, because that gives me X. Uh, yeah, I want to slash because that gets me extra dice. No, extra damage. My, my fault. Can I table flip? I don't. I don't think I see a table here. There's no table flip button. I don't know what's happening, but I. It will be entirely random when I flip over one of these four. He is doing a knee strike. Minus one initiative. I get to go first. A slash is weapon skill, which is one automatic success. I roll three physical dice. And we will see if I win. That is three successes. Four successes with the extra damage versus resistance of three. Which means you go down by one. I did get four, right? One, two, th oh, wait, no. One, two, three, four, four damage. Okay, so the resistance, I did one damage. This is going to be a very long fight if it goes on like that. Okay, so we did a damage. It's the knee strike turn now. I think I'm doing this right. 
I do my... Or I resolve my card because I... First, because I won the initiative, then he resolves his. Because he lost the initiative. So he does two damage, plus four... Uh, four total because of the attack, which means I get to resist. Using combat skill cards gives you the opportunity to divide successes as you like. You can place those successes partly in attack and in defense, but you can also put everything in attack or in defense according to your strategy. As indicated on his character sheet, he only has two points of attack, therefore this round your enemy inflicts two points of damage. Oh. Oh, I should have looked at that properly. So what I've done here is not read the card properly. So that means that I have currently used all of my dice to attack and do one damage. The other fella, the one with the scar, does damage, but I don't get to resist it because that's, I, I put all my dice into attack. So I get, I take four damage. <laughs> um, I just take four damage, I think. I messed up. I messed up. One, two, three, uh, okay. Am I on one health now? <laughs> I understand it now. It is what I thought it was, which is brutal. I'm gonna just say I messed up and take four damage. Oh my god. Because I did mess up. I didn't use any defensive successes, which means that I took four damage, which is brutal. Okay, this is going to be over real quick. I guess we'll see what happens when I lose. At random, I'm going to pick one of these four. I'm going to say it's that one. This fella is doing plus one damage, which is three damage, which will absolutely murder me. So I, uh, I used slash last time. I could use that again, but it doesn't give me the bonus, which there isn't one. So I guess I could use it again, but I'm better at um, uppercutting. I'm better at brawling than I am using weapons by, by my character sheet here. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna uppercut, which means I get an extra dice, I get four total physical plus the bonus from that. I also get the opportunity to use some of these successes. Let's roll these first and see how many successes I have for this round. Oh, that's really good. Now the question is, uh, because these are Vampire the Masquerade dice, those are two tens, which means in the role-playing game, that's a crit, but I have no clue whether this game considers that a crit. No idea at all. I'm gonna say it is a crit, because I want four successes. <laughs> They wouldn't have used vampire dice if they didn't want vampires. Like the classic V5 rules, right? I'm gonna cheat a little bit and say that this is a crit and not just two successes. So I've got four successes here, plus the three here. I am going to use three to remove the plus one damage, the three total damage. That gives me four successes still versus the resistance of three. 3 minus 4 is 1. I do another 1 damage. So I am really, really bad at, at doing damage. <laughs> but the good news is that it's on to the next round. And so there's no bonus if I use Uppercut again. What I absolutely want is to make sure I don't die. Because I'm about to get my head knocked off by a vampire. So I'm going to parry, which gives me an extra dice. So I get to roll four again, which is pretty awesome. It's, does this count as randomizing? I don't actually know which one's which. Sort of counts as random. Let's do that one. I don't want to be kicked again. Okay, that's three damage from them. Three successes plus the brawl, because this is a brawl action. They should really have the um, fist icon next to brawl. I know at some point in here it says athletics as well. They should definitely have icons for each of the things if that's how they're doing it. I mean, they do have the icons, right? They should just put it on the sheet. 
Uh, that is three successes! If I am remembering correctly, from the rules that I literally just learnt, that means I can use three to get rid of that three attack. So it'd take no damage, and any extra successes get added on as an initiative to the next round. Right, I don't want to parry anymore, I want to do more damage. I'm gonna do the uppercut. That's my choice. And this dude is doing parrying! At least I won't die but he gets a resistance total of four. So I've got to really, really do a lot of damage here. Ooh, that is one, two, three from Brawl, four, five total. He fails initiative, so I get to move. He gets a resistance of four, I get five. Once again, doing one damage. I, I will be done with this in four turns. <laughs> if everything goes, According to Kakaku, let's do that one. Punch. Okay, plus one initiative. So we're getting two damage. I am slashing, which gives us an extra damage. But we do only roll three dice this round. Oh, and we get three successes. Four successes with the weapon ability that we have, plus one extra damage. So, 4 minus 2, let us use two successes to negate the damage. So, let's just say that that's there. We do two, that's three damage. But that would be negated entirely by the resistance. So, no one does any damage to anyone this round. One damage will make all the difference here. So, no one does anything that round. It's a fairly even match between this fella who appears to be a vampire, and this lady who, despite the artwork, is not currently a vampire. <laughs> Left, right, up, down, chat. Choose one for me. Up. Thank you, Sketh. Kick. Oh no! That's plus one damage. Three attack total. And the initiative of five goes to the uncanny soldier. We were going to do an uppercut, but the uncanny soldier gets... Kicks us in the teeth! before we get a chance, so we are dead. Which means we move to card 14. It's useless. This enemy is way out of your league. Your blows don't have the effect of expected effect and his attacks are too effective. His last attack was fatal to you. Knees on the ground, you spit saliva and blood. Your wounds are horribly painful. Leaning on you, he grapples your face with his dirty fingers and looks at you with contempt. Him. You didn't think you could get away from it. You did? Ha! Join your brother now. He draws out a switchblade and with a quick move, stabs you. Stabs you it in the middle of the chest. <clears throat> sort of destroyed the drama there. Never mind. <laughs> you collapse to the ground with a cry of agony. Your view blurs and your breath slows. In the end, you couldn't avenge your brother. Your enemy gives a last kick to check that you are a menace no more. You don't even feel the pain now. Finally, he goes away, leaving you to your imminent death. The fight ends here. Damn! Flip the narrative card and read the conclusion of the prologue. Oh, this thing? This thing here? Uh-oh. You died that night. He left you there to bleed out. You felt like abandoning your little... You felt life abandoning you little by little. Left there to com contemplate your brother's lifeless body. After a moment that lasted an eternity, a strong musk saturated the air. The silhouette of a mysterious stranger appears and leans over you. Stranger, you fought well. You should do the trick. At once, you feel the stranger lifting you up in the air with extraordinary strength, pulling your neck to his lips. His long hair strokes your face and you exhale your last breath. A liquid with a metallic taste pearls on your lips and on your throat. The next moment, a bestial roar tears you from the inside and you are back on your feet, hungering for blood. These nights... Your mind erases, uh, erased the memories of the transformation that led you to spend this freezing winter alone. Unsure of what you really are. That was a long time ago. Today, 
you know you're a gangrel. Free, fierce, and proud. Tonight, your brother's killer is on the territory of your sire, and an expected chance to take your revenge. Blood will soon drench the grounds of these gardens. You can play scenario one, and we have three XP! I don't know what that means in the context of this game. Apparently it is something you can play solo. Apparently we might be able to use that to spend on attributes or skills or disciplines. I don't know. I am interested to see what they do for the disciplines. I know they have confirmed a whole bunch of clans like the La Sombra, the Ministry, obviously Gangrel. I don't know. Uh, which other ones there's a facebook website i'm gonna link that to you because what i'm gonna do this was streamed so if you want to catch the streams live if you're not already here then twitch.tv forward slash gaming ftl otherwise i will do as many of these updates with uh how the game's going because this is cool if you're i uh, do people want to see me play this game apparently it's a solo rpg and uh, an interesting story to go with it Maybe one for each clan? I don't know. But it would be fun to play it with friends as well. I like the idea, it's very simple, with the set amount of successes for your enemies and, I guess, using random cards to choose their actions. And once you actually use the, car uh, the cards and the rules properly, it would be <laughs> easier <laughs> to play faster. Um, but yeah, we got to play through the... the Siring of a vampire. Tell you what, let's look and see what winning would get us on card 13. Your strategy works! Your your blows swiftly impact your enemy. Uh, at the last second, you see his flesh mutate and his wounds heal at an ungodly speed. Nice try, bitch. This game is over. Uh-oh. I would have gotten an extra XP if I'd won. I do like the idea of these narrative cards as well. Oh, never mind. If you wanna if you wanna play this, I will put a link to this page here. Hang on, let's go back. Here, this one. I'm gonna put that in the uh, comments. Uh, but until then, thanks for watching and goodbye.